Now we will discuss a chest x-ray in a person presenting with uh, pain in the left scapular region. Of course, you know that the differential diagnosis should include aortic dissection. And uh, we will discuss only the cardiovascular possibilities because otherwise uh, there will be so many other possibilities on the x-ray which I am going to show. This is the chest x-ray which I was mentioning. Scapulae are beyond the lung fields and this possibility of a uh, stomach bubble over there. So this could be a PA view though we cannot be very sure in a chest x-ray which is taken for a patient with pain. So if it is a supine view the mediastinal widening will have less relevance than if it is a the classical PA view but this is a good x-ray because you can see the tracheal air shadow the bronchial column all are seen very well and the lung field also seen very well aortic knuckle is seen here and mediastinal widening is seen when a mediastinal widening is seen first possibility in a person with left scapular region pain is of course dissection of the iota other possibilities you have to think of an aortic aneurysm and also unfolding of iota in elderly persons. Even though chest x-ray is an initial tool, it is not enough. You have to go for echo at the bedside to look for a flap in the iota or aortic aneurysm. Even though you cannot detect all aortic dissections by an echo, bedside echo. But bedside echo is an easily available investigation in a patient presenting with the chest pain to the emergency department. Then, of course, the diagnostic test is a CT angiogram. Nowadays, all of us go for a CT angiogram for diagnosis of aortic dissection. It will give the extent of dissection and uh, it is useful in deciding the management. This image has been labeled for convenience. Ascending aorta is labeled here. Aortic knuckle, also known as aortic knob, and the descending aorta going down. From an academic point of view, these are some of the measurements which can be taken from a chest x ray. Uh, in this case, I have taken the measurements or the ratio using a grid and a ruler in a PowerPoint presentation because there is a limitation. Well, it is all digital x-rays. The size of the x-ray which you get is not like the old size. It is often smaller and very often you are seeing it only on the computer screen. If you are seeing on the computer screen, maybe the measurements can be taken from the screen. Otherwise, if you get an x-ray, it is difficult to take the measurements because it will not be standard with the old teaching. Old teaching was that the width, that is the mediastinal width, more than 8 cm is significant. And there is also a machine known as left mediastinal width. Mediastinal width is from the right lateral margin of the mediastinal shadow uh, between the right lateral margin and left lateral margin at the level of the aortic knob. That is the maximum mediastinal width. That is what you take. Left mediastinal width is from the middle of the tracheal shadow to the left lateral edge of the aortic knob. So these are the two measurements which you can take on chest x-ray to quantify mediastinal width especially for research purpose. And when you look at the x-ray there is another thing which you can do as a comparison because as I mentioned the size of the x-ray films may be different. So, if you take the transverse thoracic diameter at the level of the aortic knob and you can compare with the mediastinal. So, more than one third, that is the mediastinal width, more than one third of the transverse thoracic diameter at the level of the aortic knob will be suggestive. In this case, I have measured it using the grid and the ruler and I have found it 0.46. So it is definitely more than one third. This is one way of quantifying.